Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and I'm speaking to you from near our healing centre in the beautiful far west of Ireland. And this is part two video telling you about the benefits of enrolling on my Vargas course in Vedic Astrology. Well, what are the Vargas? Well, they're the divisional charts. Okay, what are the divisional charts? Well, they are charts derived from the birth chart and each divisional chart tells you about a special area of life and gives peerless declaration that is so valuable. But of course its value is only really realised by you if you heal what the Varga chart says about that area of your life and empower yourself thereby. It's not an exercise in showing off our ability to handle formula. It's an exercise in becoming who we were born to be in this life. So, well, what is Vedic astrology? So basically, Vedic astrology is the astrology of ancient India, and it uses the sidereal zodiac, which is, you could say, is anchored to the stars and provides a declaration of destiny and life purpose. Western astrology, on the other hand, is, uses the tropical zodiac and makes a supreme psychological declaration, and you need both. Um, in addition, there's the wonderful lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology, the nakshatras, and I do teach a nakshatras course. The 27 lunar signs, the 27 nakshatras make a supreme declaration of our emotionally based consciousness and identity warts and all, and our capacity to grow our emotional self into a higher spiritual expression. And it's, it, you know, it's peerless. And so here, again, I'm mentioning another course, the Varga course, or divisional course, which again is, is peerless and tells you how to make supremely accurate declaration about a very specific area of your life. So, basically, um, we work through the Varga charts, looking at your chart and my chart. So it's grounded, authentic, caring, genuine declaration and study. It's not recitation of formula. And of course, it's linked to healing and empowerment. And each Varga represents a very special area of our life. And an important thing to take in is that the planets have a different dignity in each Varga. So, for example, well, Jupiter equals husband in a woman's chart. And the person, you know, the woman might have a terrible Jupiter, really deeply fallen in her birth chart. But in her Navamsha chart, the ninth harmonic chart, the D9, her Jupiter might be really good. So when Jupiter Dasha kicks in, suddenly getting it together with the husband will flower. Um... And notice that uh, each Varga chart has its set of ruling gods and goddesses, ruling deities. And they bring a special divine energy to a planet that is placed in their area of the chart. OK, let's just give you a little taster of what areas of life the Varga charts cover. And it's all set out in more detail in the associated blog. So the parts one and part two video both have the same associated blog. So the D1 chart, the Rashi or birth chart, is um, basically like your first house, your son, your life path. You know, the person who treads the road of this incarnation. But the D2, the second house, is all about your value issues and your wealth issues. And this is fascinating. The Drekana, the D3, is about sibling issues and how you express your energy. The D4, the Chaturtamsha, is about your fortune in life, property, banks and treasures. The D7, the Saptamsha, is about conceiving children, co-creation, creating a dynasty. The D9, the ninth harmonic chart, is the Navamsha. 
a most important divisional chart. It declares your ideal ashram in life, your ideal state of life, and your marriage issues and how your soul communicates to you in this life. The D10, the Dashamsha, gives magnificent guidance about your career issues, the fruits of your labours and your life. What will your career issues be? What is your ideal career? And then the D12, the Dwadashamsha, says the effect on your life of your ancestry, of your parents and your ancestries back beyond them. And so it goes on down the list. So there are 16 major Varga charts. And as the harmonic gets higher to the D40, the D45 and the D60, you know, quite awesome spiritual declaration is offered. And if you look at the blog, you'll see the details of the other Varga charts. I don't want to gabble through them all. OK, how are they constructed? Well, part one video was about the D12, the Dwadashamsha, the effect of your ancestry. And so quite simply, each sign is divided into 12 portions. And then the 12 portions are distributed round the chart, round and round and round, cumulatively creating each of the houses of the D12 chart. It's as simple as that. Well, it's not simple, but anyway, the computer does it for you. That's the big thing. And basically, having got the chart constructed, your planets will be in, you know, in different houses to what they were in your birth chart, and they'll be conjunct different planets often. And so it makes a different statement. And as I said, those planets will have different dignities. So one that was strong in one chart might be weak in another. And then you check which area of the divisional chart a planet falls in and the ruling deity of that chart. And that gives the spiritual energy of that area. So we were looking at the D12 chart, the D12 Varga, the statement of your, the effect of your ancestry. So basically, if you're in 1st, 5th and ninth. Dwadashamshas, you're in a Ganesha ruled Dwadashamsha. And so Ganesha is Lord of Obstacles. And basically, if you have a planet there, your, your ancestry, which is the area of life, will give you encouragement, protection, and education. How wonderful! So the, uh, the second of the four deities is the Ashwins or the Ashwinis, and they ruled the 2nd, 6th and 10th Dwadashamshas. Now the, Ash, the Ashwin twins are the divine physicians. They're the sons of Surya and Sarjana. Their nature is to bring healing, and not just any healing, fast healing, and I mean fast. They're like the ambulance men of the gods. And so, if you have your planet in an Ashwin Dwadashamsha, that means your, the effect of your ancestry will bring healing and maintain quality of life and provide the healing and support you need to sustain this in the area of life covered by that planet. And so you can cooperate that by studying healing, getting healing, living in a healing way. The seed is there. Now, as I said, there are four deities altogether, and numbers three and four are more challenging. So the third, seventh, and eleventh Dwadashamsas are ruled over by Yama, Lord Yama, Lord of Death. And so this is a totally different energy if you have a planet there. And so what the supreme value of the perception you can get from the study of the D12 is that what you need to bring to the management of that planet is control and restraint. It will state the, ne the necessity for you to bring discipline. It will bring into your life difficulties that need to be disciplined. Yama is Lord of Death. And so planets falling there can indicate death or loss, particularly of ancestors, parents and relatives, when those planets are activated in some way. 
And what it does say, and this is really important, in relation to the area of that planet in a Yama Dwadashamsha, you have to make special disciplined learning and growth to prepare for your death. So the fourth and final set of deities in the Dwadashamsha Charter is, is higher griva, the horse-headed aspect of Vishnu. And basically this is about, in a way, serpent knowledge, deep knowledge, death and rebirth type knowledge, you could say shamanic knowledge. And um, so it involves deeply penetrating understanding of the phenomena in your life, of how to grow and transform in situations. And often a planet there will bring you a whole series of really difficult situations in your life with the divine purpose of giving you knowledge and understanding which you're left with even after all else has been left behind. And so you're able to deal with negative, unwanted or uncalled for karmic scripts. You're able to transform them and grow spiritually. You're able to bring into manifestation the residual knowledge during the passage of this lifetime. So have a look at my advanced vedicastrologycourse.com website. Enroll on my magnificent Varga course. It's caring, it's individual, it's detailed, wonderful resources, videos on each Varga. And um, you, I, I would just say you need a basic knowledge of Vedic astrology to do it. So if you don't feel you've quite got that, enroll on my Vedic Astrology Foundation course first. That's www.mastervedicastrology.com. And as I said, in you know, it's the same as with all my Vedic Astrology courses. If you want to cross over to bring in the declaration of Western Astrology as well, that's perfect. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.